What is going on, everyone? Hope you're all doing well and had a fantastic weekend, as I did myself. Really great weekend, honestly. Today, we're going to be talking about Hogwarts Legacy and whether or not your PC is going to be able to run this game. And spoiler alert, the recommended and minimum system requirements are deceptively modest until you read the fine print. And also, we've got some details for the system requirements on Skull and Bones, which is going to be coming out later this year. But let's get into it. But first, today's video is brought to you by SuperCDK.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro licenses for just $22, and then you can unlock the prestigious Dark Mode for Windows 10, which I honestly could not live without. It is blinding without the dark mode you guys needed in your life. And now you can also save an additional 25% off at checkout by clicking buy now on any software products over there. Just go ahead and add it into your cart and put in my code JP25 at checkout and apply and that'll bring our price from $22.44 all the way down to $16.83, a savings of over $5. And I'll walk you through how to get your key and install it on Windows 10, go ahead and click Submit Order and complete your checkout from there. For me, that's gonna be with PayPal, and then click on Pay Now. After completing the checkout, it'll bring you to your purchased order page and it will update in a matter of seconds, or just go ahead and hit F5. Go ahead and do that one time. It came through literally immediately. I got the payment email that it had gone through and the delivery of the product exactly at the same time. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on view keys and codes and we'll get our code right here that we can go ahead and copy and paste in on Windows 10 by hitting the start button and typing the word activate. When you see that activation settings or see if Windows is activated, go ahead and click on that and it'll bring up this right here and click on change your product key or unlock Windows 10 as I already have Windows 10. I obviously don't need to put in a new key, but just paste it in and then go ahead and click next and you are all done and set. For more information on supercdk.com as well as the coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. First up, Hogwarts Legacy, which is easily in my top five most anticipated games for titles that have been revealed and are, you know, coming out within the next year or so. It's not coming out before the end of the year, which is kind of sad, kind of unfortunate, honestly, but it is coming out on Feb uh, Fe February 10th, 2023, you know, if, as long as we don't see any, any delays or anything like that. Now, I said at the start of this that it is deceptively uh, modest system requirements, and you will see why as we jump over to DSOG. And take a look at these. We'll start off at the minimum where they say Windows 10, 64-bit, i5-8400 or Ryzen 5 2600. Fair enough. The CPU requirements across the board seem to be pretty pretty okay. That's not really an issue there, but 8 gigabytes of RAM. And then they say a GTX 1070 or RX Vega 56. They mentioned DirectX 12, 85 gigabytes of space. Now, all of that sounds fine. But when you read the additional notes... That they recommend that they say that this is for 1080p 60 FPS on low quality settings with upscaling used here, which could be DLSS or FSR. I'm assuming FS, it might have both, but I'm assuming they mean FSR here as a, it's a 1070 or Vega 56, and either one of those will support DLSS. So you need a 1070 for 1080p on low with upscaling, which is pretty crazy. So once you read that part of it, it is sounding like this game is going to be pretty darn taxing, and that continues here for the recommended requirements, which again, CPU requirements, not that difficult, i5-8400 or Ryzen 5 3600, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and then they say a GTX 1080 Ti or an RX 5700 XT, same DX12 and 85 gigabytes of space, but this 1080 Ti is for, again, 1080p 60 FPS, but on high quality settings, and again, upscaling quality is used. So even if you want to just run this game at 1080p, 60 frames per second at high, not even maxed out, they're saying you're they're still recommending that you're going to have to use some type of upscaling. So it sounds like this game is going to be pretty darn taxing when it releases next February. So I'm a little concerned, even for a 3080 Ti as I game at 4K, um, you know, if you translate that into like what, you know, we have now, I'm sure I'll, I, even someone with a 3090 is going to be left using something like FSR or DLSS to get this game running at a smooth 60 frames per second. That's based on this. That's sounds like a fairly reasonable expectation that you are going to need a hell of a GPU if you want to run this thing 
natively, uh, let alone, you know, at, you know, 4K, maxed out, all that stuff. And if there's ray tracing, all of those things in the game, it's sounding like it's going to be pretty demanding. And, you know, with the gameplay and the videos and stuff that we have seen so far up until this point, it's understandable why. The game looks absolutely gorgeous. The global illumination and the lighting effects when the, the wands are being used and all of that. So I really hope that this game comes out and it is an absolute banger because everything I've seen about this game so far, just in videos, it looks great. Um, big fan of the Harry Potter, um, you know, film series. I don't really, I didn't read the books or anything like that. I'm not a big book reader, but absolutely love the films. My, both of my siblings love the books and the movies. All of my friends love the movies and some, and some of them like the books as well. So, yeah, pretty much everyone probably has some level of a relationship with the Harry Potter universe it's been, as it's been a massive part of pop culture over the last, like, 10, 20 years or so. So I think there's a lot of anticipation, a lot of hype for this game from Avalanche Software, and I just really hope that the gameplay is as good as I want it to be set in this world. So far, as I said, the visuals all look incredible and may end up justifying the uh, the graphics requirements of this. Like, as I said, they read like, oh, it's not that bad, recommend a 1080 Ti, but... That's for 1080p with upscaling. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on that one. Next up, we have got Skull and Bones, which is going to be releasing this year. This one's been kind of, uh, you know, on track for quite some time. And it was like there were some delays and was, some people weren't even sure when, when or if ever it was going to come out. And it's basically a pirate game from Ubisoft. It seems to really be... Uh, kind of built on the back of the ship and combat that we saw in some of the Assassin's Creed games like Black Flag and Valhalla. So it sort of seems to be built off the back of that, more, more so even Assassin's Creed 4, 4 Black Flag. It almost felt like that game was sort of like a sort of like a test to see, you know, are people interested in the ship combat and all that kind of stuff. And I guess the answer was a resounding yes. Uh, and, you know, with the success of games like Sea of Thieves, which had a pretty rough start, when it first launched, but over time, the game, from what I hear, has gotten incredibly better, and it has a very large and dedicated fan base, and gets constant content updates and all that stuff. Um, so Skull and Bones is going to be coming out later this year, like I said, November 8th, and we've also got the system requirements for that, and proving once again, as always, Ubisoft are some of the best in class when it comes to publishing system requirements and all of the de details being packed into one sort of infograph, and it's not just a, you know, a list of requirements like we just saw for Hogwarts Legacy. Um, they're always very detailed in letting you know what they're going to include at the top, like PC features, uncapped FPS, multi-monitor and widescreen, built-in benchmarks, which almost every Ubisoft game has had, at least for like the last five to eight years or so, HDR and SDR with image calibration, advanced input settings for, you know, key bindings, DLSS, as well as FSR and ray traced global illumination. So, Right off the bat, these are things I would love to see included with all sorts of system requirements and features lists to let people know what's going to be coming to the PC version and also breaking down not just minimum and recommended requirements, but telling you what they're targeting, which I do appreciate that Hogwarts Legacy did that, but this gets even into more detail as they have a few different options like 1080p low 30 FPS as a target here, running an i7-4790 and a Ryzen 1600 for the GPU, a GTX 1060 or an RX 570, and it just says 8 gigabytes of RAM and Windows 10, 65 gigabyte SSD across the board for all of these. And then they jump up to 1080p high 60 frames, where an i7 8700K or Ryzen 5 3600, which makes sense. Open world games, typically more demanding. Skull and Bones is going to be an open sea game, and I'm sure there'll be quite a few ports as well that you'll be able to go run around in and loot and pillage, and maybe not rape, but loot and pillage. Don't be like Matt Ariza. That's a, the Bills punter, by the way. Bad joke. Maybe too soon. You probably don't even know who he is. For the GPU at 1080p on high 60 frames, they say an RTX 2070 or an RX 5700 XT. And from now until the end of this, it's 16 gigabytes of RAM, Windows 10 or Windows 11 straight across the board. Jumping up to 1440, they say high for high 60 FPS at 1440p, an i7-9700K or Ryzen 5 5600X an RTX 3070 GPU, or an RX 6800. 4K Ultra, 60 frames per second. Now, for this resolution, they do say that they would suggest DLSS or FSR on the balanced preset. So it does sound like Ultra is going to be pretty taxing at 4K if they're using the balanced preset and not something like the performance preset, which I usually don't like to go below the performance preset 
So we'll have to wait and see how the performance is on this one. But they say an i5-11600K or Ryzen 5 5600X for the GPU and NVIDIA RTX 3080 with DLSS Unbalanced and for AMD and RX 6800 XT with FSR Unbalanced. So I'm hoping my 3080 Ti might just nudge that up enough to be able to run it um, you know, with, with DLSS, maybe on performance mode, especially if I disable ray trace global illumination, which they don't mention in the requirement portion of this, but they do mention ultra. So I have to assume that's just everything maxed to the hilt with ray tracing. I would hope, um, if it's requiring the, uh, the balanced, the balanced DLSS or FSR preset. Otherwise I would hope that you could probably, if you get rid of the ray trace global illumination, I would hope to be able to run the game at native or with DLSS on, on performance. So there you go. We got the system requirements, as I said, for Hogwarts legacy and skull and bones over the weekend. Please let me know down in the comments if you're looking forward to either of these titles. And if you are, you know, are you concerned at all about these system requirements with the PC that you're running? Maybe make an upgrade in the last half of the year as we are expected to see launches from for CPUs from Intel as well as AMD. We're expected to see GPU launches from NVIDIA as well as AMD. So it's going to be a very exciting track coming down these last few months with all these new titles coming out. Lots of new hardware coming out to test these new titles. I, I, I can't remember a time before or like during the holiday season where, you know, typically where we see all the games coming out, but also having all of the hardware kind of coming out from all the companies all at the same time. And Intel's got GPUs coming out too, which seemed to be pretty underwhelming, honestly. They did not live up to my expectations at all, although they probably should have been low as it's been a while since they've done dedicated GPUs like this. And also Raja Kaduri was behind it, and he is a bit of a fail, if you ask me. So <laughs> there we go. I'm excited, though, for these next five months and seeing these these games running and, and testing them all on all the new hardware and everything. So, as I said, I look forward to seeing what you guys think about it down in the comments below. Have a fantastic day. I'll catch you tomorrow for another video. Peace.